All right, everybody, I'm on the iPhone again because I just don't want to have to pack more camera gear and I apologize if you can hear stuff in the background. I've loaded up my Krampus. I kind of wanted to show my setup. I've uh, updated the bike. I put some Jones loop bars on here and I have the Blackburn um, Outpost Elite handlebar bag and um, I <laughs> for, had foregone cages on the fork. I'm actually getting rid of this fork. I just received an MRP carbon fork um, that showed up at my old bike shop. So I just have to go pick that up and cut the steer tube and um, install it on here. But I'm pretty excited because that'll drop um, at least a pound off the bike, <laughs> which is pretty significant. But um, so in here, um, in this bag, the bigger gray one, the actual Blackburn one. I have my um, my sleeping quilt. Uh, I have my cook set and a sleeping bag liner. I think that might be it. Um, but yeah, my cook set and my quilt and sleeping bag liner are all in there. And in this black um, bag, I fit all of my clothing in there. So kind of like my socks, my all the stuff I'm gonna like sleep in, kind of a situation. And I basically, if I'm just doing a sub 24 hour thing, I usually just wear the same kit the next day. I'll maybe bring an extra pair of shorts, but I'm not gonna do that today. And I use these straps, the voile, is that, I don't know how you pronounce that. Voila, voile, <laughs> um, straps from my wide foot cages that are mounted to my top stone and um, hooked them together because there's, um, some webbing on the front of the Blackburn bag and just mounted it that way to the front, um, which is really awesome. It saves me from having to reinstall the cages on um, the front here, which I'll eventually do when I get the carbon fork, um, but I just was kind of lazy about it. So I just did that and it's work working out nicely. The Jones bars are awesome for this. Um, I got my little Knight Rider Lumina light mounted here. Um, I was kind of experimenting with where to put it. I'm just gonna try here and it turns, which is kind of nice. So I can have it off at an angle, but then turn it so it's kind of head on. Um, the ergon grips that I had had on before and then some new Supercaz orange bar ends. Um, put a live carbon cage on the bike. I moved over my Topeak bag. Um, this is the Blackburn little um, feed bag thing that I've had on my top stone and then the Blackburn Outpost Elite seat bag which I love this thing it's amazing um, I've used it many 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 times and it, thus far knock wood it has not failed on me um, I also upgraded the seat post on this bike so I put an old-school kind of Easton carbon post that was laying around the shop um, on there and I put my specialized Ruby saddle on here since I put a Brooks saddle on my top stone. So I made some changes to it, but it's not super duper different. Um, it will look different, obviously, with the black um, MRP fork on there. Oh, I also put some fixation flat pedals on there. I think I had sold my last pair of like really kind of nice flat pedals with my um, full suspension mountain bike, my Live Peak. And so I needed some new pedals and those came in and they're orange. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I decided to just stick with flat pedals on this bike because for winter commuting, it makes more sense. And it's just nice to only have to carry around one pair of shoes with you when you're camping or bike packing. And I'm rocking some 510s and they're pretty comfortable. So they'll just double as my camp shoes. I forgot to mention what was kind of packed in each of these things. So in here, I have, um, I'm actually bringing a tarp and a bug bivy. So I have a bug bivy that I bought from REI on like a discount because I had a coupon and I haven't really had a chance to set it up yet. Um, I've had it for like a year and it's just been sitting in my bin. I've like set it up in inside the house or whatever, but I haven't really tried it much because I've been kind of going the way of hammock camping. So I have the bug bivy, I have, um, the tarp and I have my sleeping pad in there as well. I usually don't carry a sleeping pad in a hammock, but um, I bought one from Climate that I'm giving a try, the ozone pad. So I'm gonna try that out. And then um, in here, 
I usually keep things like my phone, wallet, keys, kind of the stuff that I want to protect because it's waterproof. And here I have some various like snacks. Uh, I have a ba backup battery bank, cables for charging, my earbuds, um, kind of random stuff, some hand sanitizer, some uh, Kleenex for bathroom purposes and whatnot, and uh, I usually keep my mask in one of these as well. So. That's, oh, I have a multi-tool in there. Um, I also have a pump and a spare tube in here as well, which um, don't take up too much room, but um, ideally I would like to get an inner triangle bag for this. I do have a jammed bag, but I have to put it like the reverse way, um, but it doesn't fit very well, especially with a full-size water bottle. This frame is so, the inner triangle is so small. Um, I may, if I go the route of putting cages up here, just use that for water. But um, actually on this trip, I am wearing a an REI, I think they call it like the Flash 18, which I have two liters of water in, some additional food and um, other sundries. So my game plan is, um, well, I checked a lot of the state parks in the area and they're all booked up for camping. Um, technically, I believe there's a rule that if you bike or hike in, you can, you can still stay, but uh, I actually am instead going to check out a wildlife preserve. Um, I am uh, going to do that. I don't have much daylight left. I purposefully left late in the day knowing I would likely be doing a stealth camping situation. Um, the weather was kind of sketchy when I left Madison, um, but going south it seems okay. There's a pretty wicked headwind, but we'll see what happens and I'll likely not stop again until I reach my destination, set up camp, get you know, familiar with the area, make sure that I'm not like gonna be found or piss anybody off, so onward. So I've made it to my destination, or at least what I hope will be my destination for this evening. There were like three teenaged goth girls taking what looked to be like wedding photos or engagement photos or something. I'm not really sure. Um, but I'm just gonna like hang out in this picnic table area and act like I'm just gonna cook some food and make my way. Um, there's not like a great spot for me to set up camp that's like hidden so I might just be like fuck it and just set up somewhere um kind of like out in the open that I can put my tarp up and just kind of be chill and hopefully nobody will come and bother me 
Um, guess we'll find out. But yeah, I'm just gonna hang out. The mosquitoes suck, even though it's windy. But I'll make some food and then see what happens next. I guess wait for the sun to go down so I can set up shop somewhere. Outdoors, it's a two liter bladder that I can hook a water filter to. So, I'm gonna use this to fill up my water in there and see how it goes. Spam soup, anybody? Just kidding. All right, I'm gonna bring this back up to a boil so it can make the tanks. These are the instructions. Didn't bring any margarine or anything, or olive oil. Figured I'd show off my camp kitchen. So I've got the um, Snow Peak uh, Max Light, maybe? I don't remember the exact one. It's a titanium stove. I've got this. Um, I actually have to shout out to, I think it's Homemade Wanderlust. Um, she turned me on to her YouTube channel, turned me on to these little Sea to Summit cups. This one is like a Let's see, I think it goes up to like three quarters of a cup and it just squishes down, but this is what I'm going to eat out of. But I like that it fits inside of my stove, or I mean my pot. Um, I have a little titanium pot that I got from REI. Um, but yeah, and then I use a bandana, that always stays in. A lighter, um, my little SOG knife. It's really heavy, so I'm probably going to go to something lighter and smaller, but it works, I've had it for a lot of years. Um, and then my Snow Peak Titanium Spork. I really like Snow Peak, all their stuff is like made in, in Japan for the most part and it's really high quality. And this is my breakfast for tomorrow. So this is a half a cup of oatmeal, like a pinch of salt, a pinch of some like light brown sugar, some raisins, golden raisins. Um, put a couple of chocolate chips in here just so I can have some sugar in the morning to kind of fuel me on my ride home. Um, but I'll do usually some sort of iteration of this, usually some sort of dried fruit, maybe some nuts. Um, most of my nuts unfortunately were expired in my cupboard so that didn't work out so well for me but um, I also like to bring, this is a big thing of almond butter but I usually do like the smaller size RX uh, nut butters. And then my new, this, I mean, I bought it a while ago, but it's new to me. Um, I've seen a lot of through hikers using these, the Sea Knock um, or Knock Outdoors bladders. Um, I have a couple of different bladders from like Camelback and stuff, but I like that this one you could hook up to, I have a Sawyer water filter. I have not had to use it as of yet, but I bring it with me on every ride just because you never know. You never know what's gonna happen. If you're gonna get stranded somewhere, if you're not gonna have access to water, especially because of COVID. Um, so it's just nice to have the option to get water from a, a stream or something along the way. Bon appetit, everybody. It's like always alarming 
how many like how much mashed potato this actually is um but i'll eat all of it i think well i'm gonna try try to do the clean plate club clean plate club i'm gonna be eating like <laughs> let's see a fourth of a cup there's four servings about 444 calories 440 calories worth of potatoes plus the spam which is uh about 230 calories oh my god that's a lot um but yeah i hopefully won't be hungry at all tonight so and i already took a little bite and the def the spam like cooking it before and like leaving it in the water definitely added way more flavor so pro tip if you're a hiker or a biker and you eat meat and you can stomach spam i just do the spam singles because they're light and easy um like both of these like look at how easy this is to pack out it's super light too um not that i'm like that concerned about it because i'm on a bike but if i were ba like backpacking i would definitely be concerned with that so um i was gonna use this but i might just drink water out of this actually i don't know i don't know if i'll use this or not i still have a water bottle with plenty of liquids left and Let's see, after I cook that, I still have this much left, so I should have plenty. I think I just need a cup of water. Usually I do like a little bit more for my oatmeal in the morning, but that should be plenty to get me breakfast and riding home tomorrow. So, all right, cheers everyone, I'm gonna eat. So the sun is just about setting. That's the moon in the background, not the sun. <laughs> uh, oddly enough, um, it took me a while to get camp set up. Um, I have a, a tarp that I bought from Bora Gear and it's awesome. It's a great super light tarp and it packs down <clears throat> really nicely. Um, I didn't finish my dinner <laughs> because I wanted to get everything set up before um, the sun really started setting and I couldn't see anything. Um, so I have a backpacking tarp from Bora Gear. It's really nice. It's really light. It packs down really small, but because I don't have trekking poles or, um, I'm just zipping up my bivy here. I'll show you guys that in a second because I don't have trekking poles or, um, tent poles with it. It's actually kind of a pain in the ass to get it set up where, it'll actually properly protect me. Like I did run a line to my bike here. Um, I actually right now I'm, I don't even have it over my um, bug bivy because it's not supposed to rain. Um, I do have it kind of set up that if it does start to rain, I can kind of quickly get out and like stake it down to try to <laughs> protect me from getting wet. I'm also on a hill. So I'm hoping that like any water would like dissipate down um, towards the, the watershed area but um yeah i had to move stuff around it's not ideal and like because i'm camping in a place where i'm really not supposed to be there were like options for me to set up between like trees and i could have used the trees like you know with a guy line kind of situation but and i apologize if it's windy um the wind just really started picking up which is not great it's been windy the entire like ride um but yeah, so I'm just hoping that, hoping for clear skies throughout the night and I guess worst case scenario, if it's not, then um, yeah, I'll have to like run out and try to cover myself so my stuff doesn't get all drenched. And I have to work in the morning, so I'm setting my alarm for really early. I guess worst case scenario as well as I could just pack up in the rain and ride home. Um, I'm only, a about 12 miles from home actually. So um, I did initially plan to do a 25 mile route um, to take me to a state park, but that state park was very, very full and it's a Saturday night. So yeah. All right, you guys wanna see the, the setup? Let's show you. Wow, it's really dark. This is my bug bivy. <laughs> and um, this is the REI bug bivy. My tarp is to the side over here. The moon, yay! But I have my bike flipped over. I usually tie like a little guy line. 
I've only ever done this one other time and it was just like set up in a park. <laughs> I didn't actually properly like tent with it or camp with it, so we'll see. I apologize if it's really dark and you can't really see anything. Oh, there we go. It's gonna be grainy AF. Yeah, look at that high quality <laughs> apple goodness. <laughs> But you guys get the gist. So I have my, um, uh, not my sleeping bag, I have a quilt. So I have a quilt and then my sleeping pad is in there and all my little extra like clothes and stuff are in there, in their bags. And then I have my Patagonia down jacket and I have a Rab um, silk sleeping bag liner, which I brought, I always bring just because it's super duper lightweight and packs down small. Um, I usually put it in my stuff sack and just use it like underneath. There is a built-in pillow on my, um, what you call it, sleeping pad, but um, it's still not like quite cushy enough for me. So I usually put like something like that. Plus I have extra layers if it does get cold, but it's not really supposed to get that cold tonight. And I am wearing um, wool leggings. I have tons of mosquito bites. I can feel every single one of them. <laughs> But, um, I'm probably gonna, I don't know, listen to a podcast or a book or something and try to get to sleep kind of early, um, hopefully within the next couple of hours because I want to get up very early and get out of here before someone kind of comes along and wants to take pictures or yell at me for being here or whatever, um, and... I want to get home and be able to de-grossify and change before I have to go to work. But luckily I don't start work until 11.45 so I should have hopefully plenty of time to do what I need to do. So I think I'm going to call it a night. Um, maybe if anything happens. I'm like right by a road. <laughs> if anything happens I'll, I'll blog about it or vlog about it. So alright, good night. It is incredibly windy, like so windy that I don't know that I'm going to be able to fall asleep. <laughs> the moon is out, but unfortunately it's very overcast. I'm trying to relax in a little bivy. It's actually pretty comfortable. It's just that like, it's so windy, just so much noise. Um, every time I try to doze off, it's just constantly picking back up. I'm like tempted to move where I am because I'm under a bunch of trees, but I kind of feel like no matter where I go, it's just going to be the same. Oh, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind what I want to do, but, uh, I'm just going to wait it out a little bit more. Hope that the wind maybe dies down a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, that's a little update. And there's bugs all over my thing. Oh, anyway, all right. All right, friends, so. <laughs> So, my little adventure yesterday, I ended up um, actually basically leaving in the middle of the night from my overnight. So it was, oh, <laughs> it went dark on me. Uh, incredibly, incredibly windy all night long. And it was just constant traffic, like all night. I just heard this same, like, motorcycle driving around and around and around and it was so loud when I was trying to go to sleep I just like it was just so noisy because it was so dark already um, where I was staying there were there were, like no lights it was super dark I didn't even really have like a good option of where to move to unfortunately the preserve is pretty small so I ended up packing up in the middle of the night and riding home <laughs> Which maybe sounds like a cop-out, but um, whatever. I mean, the intention was there. I don't know. Anyway, just um, I couldn't I couldn't get to sleep and I was feeling kind of restless and, you know, I was kind of arguing with myself back and forth if I wanted to stay or not. And, 
you know, I kind of realized, like, my motto is, like, if I'm not having a good time, what I'm doing, I'm not going to do it. Um, or I'm not going to, you know, force myself. Obviously, if I was on, like, a longer trip or a multi-day trip, like, I would have just had to wait it out where I would have probably just had a night where I just didn't get any sleep. <laughs> I wanted to do this trip and I like doing um, sub 24 hour trips is to kind of show like it's a good opportunity especially if you're trying out a new piece of gear like do not go on a long trip without testing out your gear like I just do not recommend it. Anyway more of the story I had a good time um, I really enjoyed cooking dinner the place was beautiful watching that sunset and um, you know riding out there was fun and actually riding home in the dark minus like one kind of spooky section of the trail. Um, yeah, there was one section that was really, really dark and it was hard to kind of see even with my bright, bright ass light, um, because it was so ruddy that my, my light was just bouncing up and down. So I like couldn't see the trail ahead very well. So that kind of sucked. But honestly, I just like turned music on, on my phone and just like scream sang lyrics back in town. And then once I got back into town, I saw some cyclists kind of heading out the opposite direction, stopped and said hello. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not the end of the world. I still kind of did an overnight. Um, I want to try that location again that I went to, um, just maybe later in the year. The other issue was it was close to water, so there was still a ton of mosquitoes, uh, which was... Uh, you know, I can put up with it, but it's kind of annoying at the same time. So I think I may try to stay there later in the year, maybe in November when a lot of the leaves are off the trees and the mosquitoes and bug population kind of dies out and coming with a different setup, maybe a hammock or something like that. And hopefully I would, I would hope that maybe, you know, instead of going on like a Saturday night where there's going to be a lot of road traffic because people are out and about doing whatever, um, if I could do it on a weekday night, you know, either after work or, um, you know, on a day that I don't have to work the following day or something like that, it would be a little more quiet. So like the whole point of me going out and doing this is to, like get away from that crap. So it was really frustrating and annoying that like human beings kind of like ruined it for me just hearing like traffic all night. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the end of my video. Uh, hope you liked it. If you like this content, please continue to watch these videos as I put them out. Um, again, I'm trying really hard to kind of put out content on here. Um, yes, I have been filming on my iPhone versus my like nicer mirrorless camera just because I can like shoot and edit and do it along the way and I don't have to have any extra gear and it's a lot lighter weight. So I think um, I'll probably upgrade my phone because I'm about due for one so I can get a nicer quality and then I'm also going to be looking at options for a microphone for this and I have a tripod for my phone already so I don't really have to invest much there um, but it's just a lot easier to do these days than carrying a bunch of gear with me even though the quality is not as great um, I'll still try to make some stuff on my nicer camera but this has just been so much easier I just use like Adobe Premiere Rush and I can upload clips and edit them on my phone as I'm filming so it makes it a lot smoother and easier to get a video out um, as always you can go on Spokehaven.com I do a lot of uh, write-ups and reviews on there my Instagram at Spokehaven has kind of what I'm doing live and I have some like photos and videos and things that I make like on my trips that I don't put on here so Check that out and like, subscribe, comment, email me, whatever. If you have questions about any of my trips or gear or anything like that, please feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to be of help. Um, that's what I do professionally. I work in a bike shop. I manage a bike shop. So um, I like doing that kind of stuff. So all right, everyone. Hope you're staying safe and sane. Bye.